We're on breed study 12, 11, 12. What are we doing? Here. There you go. It's a sweet baby. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You're probably a subscriber, and I appreciate you. I can't tell you how much. And you guys, this week I got a few notes from subscribers on Etsy, Ravelry, and email, and I'm just so grateful. Thank you. It seems like anytime I'm feeling down or discouraged, you guys are just there with a note. It feels like it happens too often to be by accident if that makes sense so thank you i appreciate it we're on breed study 12. i've never told you guys this but in my archived footage it's like bs1 bs2 bs3 so sometimes when i get here i want to say we're on bs12 <laughs> oh i don't know sometimes i make myself laugh i don't know what to tell you <laughs> If this is your first video in the breed study series, just know there's a playlist so you can go and watch the whole thing front to back or look up whatever breeds you want. Um, I just figured that some people would find this five years down the line and be like, I want to do it. And this way you can just go through the whole series. How are you? Welcome to my home. We're in my studio. It doesn't look that messy from here, but it is actually insanely messy in here and crammed with stuff mostly from my shop and I'm struggling to find space, but it's okay. A couple things. So this weekend there's gonna be a weaving video and the following week there is gonna have to be a project update because I'm getting buried by projects and <laughs> don't know, I'm pretty sure that I don't even have everything on my table right now. I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna have to do an update just so I can like clean my desk off. I always just like kind of scooch them all into a pile on my desk because I'm afraid I'll forget. I have to go through Instagram. I have to go through everything, my camera roll to make sure I get everything. So that's coming soon. And then I also have a Q&A coming soon. So if you have questions that you've really, really been wondering about, please do make sure that you get them in the comments in the next couple videos because I will be doing a Q&A and I can't answer everything and I want to try and get things that are super important to you guys. So this is Breed Study 12. Just in case this is your first video and you're going to go back and do the rest, I'm using the Fleece and Fiber source book as my primary resource. That is going to be in the link below just in case you want it um, to go, kind of go along with us. And also um, there's a link to the Breed Study below. Also, one or two of you have said, oh no, it's almost done. It's really not almost done. We have weeks and weeks left of this. All right then. So this week we've got Swaledale. I don't know, this. I could be pronouncing this wrong. So somebody go ahead and feel free to correct me. It's a pretty gray. Um, it does feel a little bit coarse compared to many of the ones that we've spun. It does feel quite um, springy and lofty though so we'll see how that goes and then some targi which we have spun here before on this channel and I think I've had it in my shop before or have I only had targi silk I don't know I have never spun the first so should be interesting and I've learned so much through this breed study you know some of the things that I thought I knew have been proven to be not necessarily correct or maybe correct in some cases and not others. It's been really good for me to do this and go through this even though I feel like I'm a pretty experienced spinner. I started spinning in I think 2000, the end of 2007. It was like December. So it's, I'm pretty experienced. I've tried a lot of breeds. I've done a fleece study before quite a few years ago, probably in 2009, but I've still learned so much. So I feel like this was a totally worthwhile exercise for me and we've had so much time together. It's been great, right? Oh, we need the, okay. We're going to go to the Swaledale first. So this sheep is part of the Scottish blackface family according to this book and that is one that I have spun before and 
what I had was more like coarse, not so much a garment fiber, but let's go through this because you never really know. It does say you can tell the difference because white to grayish stripes over the eyes or circles around the eyes. That's cool. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm sure we'll get a picture. It's named for the valley in which the breed originated, located in the Yorkshire Dales National Park. Oh, they're cute. Okay, so here's our picture. I'm going to show it to you now because we're coming across it right now. So here's their picture. That's what they mean by the rings around the eyes. So they were originally used mostly for wool and now they are also used to crossbreed with, let's see, what did it say? Mashems and mules. That's usually Swaledale ewes being bred to Blueface Lester Rams to produce the North of England mule. Cool. Oh, this is interesting. So this, there's a whole section in here that's talking about like sheep husbandry going back to Roman times. So it also says that they tend to stay without fences where they were born. So that's kind of an interesting little fact. I've talked about certain parts of like technical fleece and breed study and whatever not telling the whole story and it does talk about in here the fact that you can look at the normal kind of characteristics the normal stats on these fleeces and it doesn't tell the whole story I believe that that is the truth of many of these. On paper, Swaledale, Ruffell, and Herdwick are all in roughly the same range for fiber diameter and kind of overlap in the staple lengths. All three types of fleeces also contain hair and kemp. Oh, I did not know this. Okay, so apparently the purpose of the hair and the kemp is to protect sheep from wet, wet weather. So that does make so much sense for what breeds have it and what breeds don't. And then they also have finer wool to keep them warm. So that means they're like, they can be double coated, it looks like. Just because they all, it says they all contain those different kinds of fibers, but they're extremely different from each other. So I think that's one of the reasons we're doing this, right? Swaledale is the finest of them. Uh, it still has a rough tw tweedy wool. So that's going to be fun because the there's different colors in these sheep. You get like a tweedy yarn. Okay, so it does say possibly outerwear, definitely rugs, duffel bag. Oh, as part of a basketry project. Interesting. Swaledale backs. Three and a half to six and a half pounds. Staple length four to eight inches. So we're looking at a pretty good long staple. Fiber diameter 36 to 40 microns. So you guys, somebody mentioned last time, and I have gone over this way early, what is Kemp? So funny thing that you should ask that question. I don't no, well now I know they grow these to protect that. They grow this fiber to protect them from wet weather. But it's really strange because when you pull out a piece of Kemp and compare it to the wool, you would almost not believe that it grew out of an animal. Because, and what's funny about this is that I was sitting here getting ready to record and inside my tripod that's in front of me, down low, there was a big old piece of camp hanging that must have fallen out of something I was spinning while the tripod was right next to me. So I thought I'd show you again. I did show this earlier on. So this is quite a big piece of camp. Let's see, let me get something dark behind it. This is quite a big piece of camp. A lot of times it's shorter than this, but not always. And it, you could see, let's do it again. You can see that it doesn't exactly have a crimp. It has more like a weird wibble to it. I don't know what the word would be for this particular configuration, but it's not a crimp. And it kind of has almost like a strange wave to it, if you look very closely. So the other interesting thing about Kemp and how you can tell it's Kemp is that it is flat. Uh, it's not like a round cylindrical hair. It is flat. So the last thing that tells you it's a piece of Kemp is watch this. This is so weird. Okay, so no pressure barely at all and it'll just pop apart. It feels like a dry piece of vegetation of some sort, but they grow it out of their bodies. It's just the strangest thing, but it's really kind of interesting and cool. For those of you who wondered about Kemp, that's what it is. I don't know what that came out of. It's a big piece of Kemp though. So natural colors, described as white or off-white, although likely to contain Kemp and black fibers. So this definitely had some black fibers in it. It looks gray, but it's really just because it's mixed. Some yarns and fiber are gray. It says the used milk from these sheep is used to make cheese, which is has not been in any other breed. How is that possible? 
at one time the cheese was made as a farmstead product. So once people started to want to use their farms to make money rather than just like survive, there were a number of different products that they would make or grow on their farm that were like the sort of cash crops. Oh, there is a, a Swaledale cheese company in the UK. So for dyeing it says, because of the variation in the colors of the fiber, when you dye it, it will emphasize that in a nice way. So that should be very interesting. We'll definitely have to dye this one. There will be a few of these that don't get dyed because I want to use them natural in my project, but we will definitely want to dye this one because it sounds like it'll turn out kind of cool. Tips. It says you can spin from the teased locks. That's really nice. I've never done that on this channel, but I think it's time that I did, right? Um, Viking combs makes sense because they're a bit longer. Because this is basically a dual coated sheep, if you comb it, what happens is as you pull the fibers off the comb, the longer ones come first and then you get the shorter ones, which isn't always bad. Like maybe you want that, but it does say that if you don't want that to happen, you have to recombine them somehow. So let's check a staple length. I have a suspicion this is gonna be a pretty long one. My ruler never leaves my desk now because <laughs> for a while there I never had one. All right, so we're gonna be able to see the variation. So I don't know for sure if you'll be able to see this on camera. No, I think it's gonna be challenging to see on camera, but I can see from here that there is, actually maybe you can see, there is a good amount of fibers that stop about halfway across this lock. Um, you can actually see some hanging right here. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Let's see if it's black, if it's my black t-shirts behind it, can you see? Yes, there's a good amount that are just falling down. See that? Okay, so that's partially because of the double coat. So let's get to both ends. Yep, I'm on both ends. Look at that, that's long. Am I still, do I have more space? No, nope, I'm basically there. Okay, so this is the whole lock right here and I'm gonna measure it. This is six inches, really long staples. Probably, I'm gonna spin this, I think, with a worsted draw. The thing about it is, is I'm if I do that, I'm again gonna kind of get those shorter ones in like little kind of clumps because the longer ones will wanna pull out first. I'm gonna have to just practice with this and see how it goes. I will show you what I do in the video. So let's go spin it. I am actually really excited. I suspect that if you got this in the wild, it would be coarser than this because this is not that coarse. It's kind of middle of the road, it feels like. But from the description, it seems like it should be coarser than this. Let's go spin it. So I'm done with the Swaledale and I did not really know what to expect. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is a good representat representation of the breed or not. P.S. I did look up that name to make sure I pronounced it right. I really, really enjoyed spinning this. I'm going to show you the yarn. So isn't that pretty? I would say it's DK. Um, it is pretty squishy considering. I know I only have one nail painted, I'm sorry. I'm trying out some gel, a gel kit that my daughter recommended. I really like how the color comes out because it's got some like dark fibers in it, but it's mostly white. I really like how this color comes out. It was so nice to spin. I did spin it with a short forward draw and it just, Sometimes people say it spun itself. It was so easy to spin. I could have spun it very, very thin. I did not because 
for my finished project, I don't really have a use for very, very thin yarns, but I think it would have been very easy to do. And it still made a, a pretty squishy and reasonably soft yarn. I would have no problem wearing this as a sweater. Would I wear it for something next to my skin? I mean, I would wear a hat made out of it, no problem. It's not prickly. It's just very, very nice. I am impressed and I definitely will spin more of this. I did not expect the Swaledale to bounce back as much as it did and I'll show you guys. It's got a good amount of bounce back. Needs some. Loved it. Oh, and last week Chris Hood pointed out that I started out giving yardage and then I stopped. So as I was going through these and trying really, really hard to let them tell me how they wanted to be spun, and that also includes the weight of the yarn, I started thinking that maybe the yardage would be deceiving because I'm not trying to get the same weight of yarn for every sample. If some of you guys are trying to keep track and you want to know, I'll add it back in. So the Swaledale came out 56 yards. I would say this is also DK. If you have never tried it, I would encourage you to try it. Time to go to the Targhee. Again, I did not know. In 1926, research at the USDA Sheep Experiment Station that's in Idaho in the US, if you don't know where that is, uh, it is the northern US, but it's like on the western half. They bred Rambouillet rams to Corydale and Lincoln Rambouillet ewes. So then they quickly crossbred their offsprings. They were working on developing as usual. I mean, I'm positive of this. They were trying to get a really cool and beautiful and unique fleece with a big sheep because everything they use is like a bigger breed, a breed on the bigger end, let's say that. That's how they developed it says the new large framed Targhee breed and it's named after the national forest where that um, sheep, what do they call it? The sheep experiment stations flock grazed. That's kind of cool. And it says here, this was a great success in producing that famed and much elusive huge sheep with a really cool fleece. Everybody's trying to do it right. Well, they finally did it. I'm sure they did it in other places too, I'm teasing. So it has very soft wool because of the Rambouillet ancestors, but it has handling qualities a little more of a long wool. So long wools are just easier to spin. They grow a long staple, obviously. They have less crimp and more of like a curl to them. And then they are often a little harder to felt than a fine wool, but they're feltable. So do not get the idea that Targi is not feltable. Good loft and elasticity. So the diameters kind of go over the Rambouillet and Merino range. Um, Rambouillets were actually developed from Merinos, if you remember back when we did the Rambouillets, so it makes sense. It's lofty, good elasticity, and it says, makes it lively and supple rather than springy. Ooh, lively and supple, that sounds good. It is quite consistent throughout the fleece and within the breed, so that's kind of cool. Targi facts. 10 to 14 pounds for ewes, that's a big fleece on its own, but for rams, 16 to 22 pounds. What? That is huge. I don't think I've ever had a 22 pound fleece. That's a really, really big fleece. Staple length, three to five inches, so very respectable, but kind of in the mid range. The breed standard is 22 to 25 microns, and then occasionally it'll go into a slightly finer territory. So, uh, Natural colors, mostly white because of the commercial nature of the breed's economic positioning. What that means, and I actually got asked a question about this when I talked about it, the white breeds last time, that is that if you were breeding sheep because you wanted to sell them to like commercial yarn companies, typically, this isn't always the case, but typically they do want it to be white because they can then dye it consistently to whatever color they want. If there are other colors in your fleeces, it is gonna, they can use the exact same dye, but it's gonna change the final product and they want things to be very homogenous, I guess you would say. So that's the reason why a sheep that was traditionally bred for commercial yarns is 
usually white, but that has kind of changed over time. And now there are times when you can buy like natural colored wool yarn that has been commercially processed, but it's, it's really not that frequent. Okay, so using it takes color well. We know that, I've dyed it on this channel many a time and I love it. It does say that because it's a matte fiber, where is it? Because it's a matte fiber, the colors will be like a little softer. I, I don't know that that's necessarily always been my experience, but depending on length, you you could comb or card, which makes sense because it's really more of a buy the fleece thing. Spin from the locks, you could totally spin this from the locks and it would be so much fun. That would really be cool. So it says if you're gonna card it, you need to use a fine carding cloth and handle gently to avoid nips. So one of the reasons I like Rambouillet and Targhee a little bit better than Merino, and please, I know some of you guys love Merino and I'm not putting Merino down, but I'm just saying one of the reasons I do like these two a little bit better is that I have found them to be a little easier to um, hand process without naps. I feel like with Merino, it you have to be extremely careful. You have to do things like 100% by hand or you will get naps. But when I've done Rambouillet and Targhee both, um, I have found that I can card it if I'm super, super careful and slow. I can still card it on a drum carder without naps. And that is something that just really speeds up processing for me. So I I really like that about Targhee and Rambouillet. That's my little PSA for you guys. This has the potential to produce, air quotes, everyday luxuries. And I agree with that. You can get just the softest, it's like almost feels like cottony, oh so nice. But it's still strong enough to use like day to day. The bounce of the yarn means fabrics will be cozy and resilient. I love resilient. I don't know why I like it so much, but I do. Best known for heavy fleeces, fine, nicely soft white wool with excellent loft and elasticity. elasticity. Blah, 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 blah. As always with Targhee, I am quite excited. So let's check the staple so we can go spin it. We're gonna pull off one staple length. Ooh, and I could feel how elastic it was pulling that out of there. I love it. Okay, we're gonna go to the ends. And um, much like the Rambouillet, remember how I showed you guys that how like elastic it was and how when you let it go, it's just gonna poof up and that elasticity and loftiness is gonna pop into there. You can just really see it when I'm pulling. So let's measure it. It's This is five inches. So this is quite a good long targi. It's gonna be really nice. Let's go spin it. spun the Targi. I have spun it using a drafting method that I've never used for Targi before. Not a thousand percent sold, but I think since this whole thing is about learning and trying different things and all that, um, I think it was worth doing. I'm going to show you the yarn. Okay, so it did turn out a little more uneven because of the woolen drafting but I actually wanted that for my project. Um, I can't tell you yet, but I, I do think that I'm pretty well, I've pretty well figured out what the project is gonna be. I can use some yarn that's a little less um, even, a little less consistent for a few particular parts of the project. So 
I think it's gonna be really useful. Both with Merino, Rambouillet, and Targi, and now I know Targi, although I would have probably suspected, they have so much tiny, tiny crimp that they're like grippy of the other fibers, and so they can be a little bit hard to draft woolen. I love how it turned out. It is very like squishy and fluffy, and look at how much bounce this thing has. This really has a lot of bounce back. Um, so I do love it. And honestly, I suspect had I carded it and then tried to spin it with a woolen draft, that would have been better. I think that it would have just loosened the fibers up just enough, but I didn't. This is what we did. And I have to say, I still really like the results. It's just a little thick and thin, but I kind of like that. Okay, and I got 52 yards of the Targi and you know, when it's thick and thin, it's a little harder to say, but I would probably say this is also DK, so it kind of makes sense that I came out that close yardage-wise for these. So this is one of those lovely weeks where I really, really enjoyed both fibers, which is super fun. And next week, we are gonna be spinning Tease Water. I'm gonna show you a little bit. It's a little hard to see. So Tease Water is one I have only used as locks. So I've never spun top or roving or anything like that before. I've gotten Tease Water locks and spun them into art yarn, I guess you would say. It's very highly textured yarn, let's put it that way. And um, that's the only time I've used Tease Water. So it'll be a good opportunity to try it out. And the second one is Texel which I have spun from the breed study, or I think it was called a breed study. Was it called fleece study? Whatever. The other study that I did way back when, I did spin this breed, but other than that, I have not spun any. And I have to say, if you look at one ounce next to one ounce, that's a little surprising and like, wow, right? So next week, we're going to talk about Tease Water and Texel. And next week is Lucky 13. Thanks you guys for joining me. I am so appreciative of having you on this breed study. I'm so thankful for all of you. The last two weeks, I've only put out breed study videos because I thought I was burnt out. Um, I have been trying to slow down a little bit, although it's very hard. And then um, I just don't feel right. I don't emotionally I I just don't feel okay so and I'm not 100% sure if it is burnout that I haven't properly addressed because I didn't really slow down very much I really spent the extra time trying to catch up on things that weren't getting done while I was like going a mile a minute before and I feel a little scared that I can't figure out why I feel this way and that makes me feel like I don't know what to do. So I really appreciate all your support for me missing the last two weekend videos. I don't, I wish I could explain more, but I really don't understand what's going on. I just feel awful. <laughs> I mean, I'm enjoying the breed study. I'm still learning a ton and there's been all kinds of good things happening. Uh, our daughter graduated. One of our boys moved to his very first apartment all by himself and had a birthday and um i just don't know what's going on i just feel so bad i just feel awful i just don't feel like myself i appreciate so much you guys being supportive of me like taking a little like just slowing down on the videos a tiny bit um so that i can figure out what's going on and get myself back on track. Thank you so much. I would not be here without you guys. This channel wouldn't be here without you. I often call it our channel to me. This is our space that we share and I'm just very thankful for you. I will be here next week for episode 13. I hope you have a great week. I do plan to have a weaving video out this weekend. The project's half done, so I think it's going to happen without too much stress, and I will see you then. Thanks. I love you. Bye.